recently I had the opportunity to visit Uganda. And Uganda is a place of tremendous opportunity on the African continent. They have a very progressive uh, series of scientists and farmers that are looking for the next generation of crop technologies in order to continue to survive as farmers. 80% of people in Uganda are subsistence farmers. They grow the food that their family eats. They may trade some or save some for a later time. But basically what you get from your garden, and they call it a garden, it's not a farm, it's a small two, three acre patch. What they get is what sustains them. And so there's a lot of interest in trying to make farming more sustainable, more predictable, um, certainly where they can get a product for, that'll, that they can use for whatever they need to use it for. A number of countries in, in uh, Africa have accepted genetic engineering and have used genetic engineered crops in order to meet that sustainability landmark that they're shooting for. Um, Uganda's been on the fence because of a lot of reasons, but their main crop that they're trying to protect is the banana, what they call their matoke. Uh, matoke is like a, it's more of a plantain, it's a starchy banana. Um, I ate it before, you, you steam the pulp and you put some kind of like stew or vegetables over it, ground nut sauce, whatever you have, and you eat this. And it's the majority of calories in Uganda. It's like the rice on the plate that you put something on top of. And the um, problem is, is that you have two major problems. One of the problems is bacterial wilts. And bacterial wilt uh, decimates your banana garden. Um, it spreads very quickly. You can beat it somewhat with good hygiene and good um, agronomic practices and by practicing you know, not using tools from farm to farm. But once it comes, it takes the crop. And it takes a few years, at least a year, to be able to replant and regrow if that soil is usable at all for that particular crop. Usually you have to rotate, rotate in something else. Um, it's devastating to the small subsistence farmer. The other problem they have in the Matoki regions is a vitamin A deficiency. And vitamin A deficiency comes from a lack of beta carotene in the diet, so the orange stuff in carrots. Um, it's something we take for granted here, but when you miss it, when you're in deficiency, it's devastating. It, it attacks the eyes. You have immune problems, other issues that happen physiologically. The solutions to both of these problems exist. And both of them came from generous contributions from the Gates Foundation and other uh, government programs in uh, Uganda to have the National Laboratories of Uganda with Ugandan scientists solve problems for Ugandans. And this is uh, really a kind of a joint venture between Uganda and Kenya and other lakes region countries. Scientists from Africa added genes from pepper to the Matoki banana. It took a long time to figure out how to do it, but they figured it out. Uh, and now they have banana trees or matoke trees that are resistant to bacterial disease and when you understand these I've been there I when I'm on the ride there you drive down these roads that take forever to go through because traffic is horrible uh, a, a town of 1.5 million people with about four traffic lights <laughs> and uh, you see the matoke in every roadside stand you see women carrying them on their head in a bundle under each arm you see them on the backs of bicycles. This is the cornerstone of the diet. And then you get to um, banana fields and you see the trees that you can knock over because they're infected. It hits you very viscerally as a scientist because when you go to, to the um, research park at Kowanda, you go up to where the national research labs are, you see the solution. And it's growing and it's fine, it's good. It's behind a barbed wire fence. And there's something that really affects you when you see scientists solving problems for people. And it's not, you know, Bayer Dow Monsanto. This is the government of Uganda solving problems for their people. The vitamin A banana exists too. It was uh, created by James Dale down at University of Queensland down in uh, Australia. And they've come up with ways by using plant genes, actually a banana gene, from an from a orange colored banana that isn't very good in Africa. Uh, moving those genes into the Matoki banana. And those plants exist too. And he hopes to have those released within a couple of years. The big problem with this has been the political climate 
on the ground in Uganda where the efforts from the NGOs and the EU and the USA have really poisoned the well for Parliament to make an effective decision on these kinds of products. In fact, Uganda had no formal framework in order to even begin to deregulate what these products are and if they're safe and how to even determine that. Zero framework. So the solutions, the two major problems remain stuck behind barbed wire fences. And um, it all changed recently. Um, when I was there, one of the things that happened, um, there was a meeting by parliament where the science and technology officer made a very passionate plea to finally release, create a law by which these things can be tested. And it happened, I think, October 4th, 2017. And it really does go to show you that through effective communication, through talking about science, and by sharing our passions about saving people and saving the planet, that science can work. Yeah.